In this video, you're going to learn how to classify numbers, whether they're real or imaginary, rational or irrational, if they're integers, whole numbers, or natural numbers. So take this like you would take a quiz. Go ahead and take a screenshot or write these uh, numbers down and see which categories they fall into, keeping in mind that they could fall into more than one category. Before we do that, let's take a look at a little decision tree here to see what how to determine basically what categories that a number falls into. So the most general uh, category is right here at the top where we talk about complex numbers. And if you've gotten to learning about complex numbers, this will be easy for you. If you haven't, uh, let me just kind of give you a little overview that a complex number is part real and part imaginary. So you can see you've got real numbers, imaginary numbers. If you've never heard of imaginary numbers before, the main thing to remember here with imaginary numbers is that it's whenever you go to take the square root of a negative number. So say if I had the square root of uh, negative like 49. When you try to take the square root of a number, it's basically asking you what times itself is that number underneath the square root, right? So if it's like 7 times 7, that's positive 49, not negative 49. If you do negative 7 times negative 7, that's also positive 49. So how can you really take the square root of a negative number uh, by having the same number times itself? Well, that's where imaginary numbers come into play. But for the purposes of this lesson, just remember if you're taking the square root of a negative number, like this one, it's going to be imaginary. Otherwise, it's going to fall into the real number category. Once you determine that it's real, and not imaginary, you have to decide is it going to be a rational number or is it an irrational number? It's one or the other, it can't be both. Now one way to kind of distinguish or determine is to think about that word rational. See that word ratio in there? Ratio means any number that can be written as an integer divided by another integer. Okay, now you might be saying what's an integer? Well an integer is basically any round number positive, negative, or zero. So you can see here's a list, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, etc. Whereas an irrational number might be something like the square root of uh, 43, for example. If you do this on your calculator, you'll see that this is a non-repeating, non-terminating, meaning it doesn't stop, decimal, okay? And so when you have something like that that's non-repeating and non-terminating, it's going to tell you that it's irrational, meaning this IR means like not rational, meaning it can't be written as a ratio of an integer over an integer. So for example, if I had a 0 0.7, that's the same as 7 tenths. If you divide 7 by 10, you get 0 0.7. That would be considered a rational number. Or if I had square root of 25, 25, square root of 25 is 5, which can be written as 5 divided by 1. See, anything divided by 1 is itself, so that's a ratio of two integers. So the main thing to remember, you might want to make a note, is rational is going to be uh, either a ratio of an integer over an integer or something that can be written as an integer over an integer and it could be like a decimal that uh, repeats or a decimal that terminates. Uh, and we didn't talk about the repeating decimals, but say for example if it's 0.1 repeating, like 0.1111. Well, repeating decimals can always be written as fractions of an integer over an integer. So if you do 1 divided by 9, that's 0.1111111 like that. So that's what you want to look out for with rational and irrational. But once you determine it's rational, okay, is it an integer? Meaning like we just talked about here, it's a round number that's positive, negative, or zero. Now a subset of the integers it would be the whole numbers here, and you can see the whole numbers are kind of like a, a part of the integers. It's just zero and then the positive round numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four. And then if we take it one step further to the natural numbers, oftentimes referred to as the counting numbers, like if you ask a kid to count, they'll start at one. They'll say one, two, three, four, you know, and they go up from there. They usually don't mention zero. They usually don't mention negative numbers. So what's interesting here is that it can be in more than one category. Now let me show you another diagram that can help you when you're determining what type of a number you're dealing with. So, so you can see that this big uh, set of numbers here is the complex numbers, but within that you've got the real numbers and you've got the imaginary numbers, right? And so it has to be one or the other. It's either real or imaginary, right? Or if it's a complex number, it can be a combination of real and imaginary, but for this video it's going to either be real or imaginary. But Say, for example, you determine that it's rational, like it can be written as a ratio of an integer over an integer. Well, then automatically you know it's also real because see how it's 
inside of that group, it's like a subset. Or if you determine that it was a natural number, like um, let's say the number 15, okay, that's a counting number, it's automatically gonna be a whole number, an integer, a rational number, a real number, and a complex number. So this diagram can help you save a little bit of time if you kind of realize that these numbers are subsets of larger subsets of larger groups of numbers. So you might wanna refer back to that as you're taking the little quiz here. Okay, but let's go through these now and see how you did. So let's start with number uh, one here. So it looks like we've got uh, negative square root of 49. So is that real or imaginary? Well, it's not the square root of a negative number. There is a negative on the outside, but there's not a negative underneath that square root. So that means that this is a real number. And if we simplify it further, what times itself is 49? That's seven. Then this negative on the outside makes it a negative seven. Negative seven can be written as negative seven over one, which means that it's a ratio of an integer over an integer or a rational number. Now keep in mind, it's either gonna be real or imaginary, not both, and it's gonna be rational or irrational, but not both, so it's one or the other. Now negative seven is also an integer, because remember we said integers were round numbers, positive, negative, or zero, but it's not a whole number, because whole numbers are zero and then the positive integers, and natural numbers are just the counting numbers, like one, two, three, four. So in this case, for number one, we just have those three categories. For number two, though, what did you get for number two? Well, it looks like we've got a repeating number here, 0 0.121212. So when it's repeating like that, we know we can write it as a ratio of an integer over an integer, in this case, 12 divided by 99 which means that it's rational. And if it's rational, we know that it's real. It's of course not imaginary because it's not the square root of a negative number. And we know it's not irrational because it's either rational or irrational, but not both. But now is it an integer? Well, it's not an integer because it's not a round, positive, negative, or zero number, right? So it's not whole, it's not natural. Okay, so just two on that one. So for number three, what'd you get for number three, square root of negative seven? Well, you can see here, we've got that negative underneath the square root sign. You, when you take the square root of a negative number, you get an imaginary number, which you'll learn about when you get to algebra two or further on in your math studies. But for the purposes of this video, we know it's not real, it's imaginary, that's the only category it falls into. Okay, for number four, what did you get for, for the number zero? Well, remember zero is the same thing as zero over one, right? So you can write it as a ratio of an integer over an integer. And if it's rational, we know that it's also gonna fall in that real category. Of course, it's not the square root of a negative number. And if it's rational, it can't be irrational. It's one or the other. Zero is an integer, and it is a whole number, but it's not a natural number. A natural number would be the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, like that. So zero is included in the whole numbers, but not in the natural numbers. Okay, what did you get for number five with pi? So you know about pi from geometry, right, in circles. So pi, we know it's approximately 3.14159, dot, 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 dot. So it, it keeps going. It doesn't terminate or stop, but it also doesn't repeat. So that means that it's going to be an irrational number, not rational. It can't be written as a ratio. Now, sometimes people will approximate pi with the fraction 22 sevenths, but that's not exactly pi. So we're going to say that uh, pi is irrational, not rational. It's real, it's not the square root of a negative number, so it's not imaginary. But it's not an integer, it's not a round uh, negative positive you know, number or zero, right? So it's not an integer, it's not whole, and it's not natural. So just two on that one. For number six, what did you get for number six? Well, for number six, it looks like there's a pattern here. You've got one zero, then two zeros, then three zeros, and you've got this dot, dot, dot that it continues. But even though there's a pattern, it's not a repeating decimal like we had in number two with the 0 0.121212 repeating. So this one is not gonna be rational. It can't be written as the ratio of an integer over an integer, so it's gonna be in the irrational category. It is real, though. It's not the square root of a negative number, so it's not imaginary but it's not an integer, a whole number, or a natural number. Okay, so for number seven, what did you get for number seven? Well, number seven, the square root of 121, you can simplify that to 11, because 11 times 11 is 121. And 11, we know can be written as 11 over one, anything divided by one is itself, so we have an integer, 11, divided by one, which is an integer, so an integer divided by an integer is considered a rational number, a ratio of two integers. So it's not irrational, 
And we know 11 is not the square root of a negative number, so that's a real number. And we know 11 is an integer, it's a round number, positive, negative, or zero. And it's also a whole number, and it's also a natural number, one of the counting numbers. Okay, how about for number 8? What did you get for square root of 4 ninths? Well, this one we can simplify. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, and so you can simplify the numerator and denominator separately like that. You can see that 2 is an integer, 3 is an integer, and that's a ratio of two integers, which makes it a rational number, not irrational. And we also know it's not the square root of a negative number, which means that it's a real number. And we also know that uh, it's not an integer, and it's not whole, and it's not natural. So just two, two categories. Okay, what did you get for number 9? Well, this one, you can see that we've got that negative underneath the square root, that square root of negative 17. When you try to take the square root of a negative number, we call that an imaginary number, and that's the only category that that one falls into. And number 10, we've got a decimal, 0 0.789. What did you get for that one? Well, you can see that it terminates, it stops. There's no uh, dot, dot, dot. There's no line over any of the numbers to show that it repeats. This is a terminating decimal, which means that it can be written as a fraction, 789 over 1,000, which means that it's a rational number. And it's not the square root of a negative number, which means it's real, but it's not an integer, it's not a whole number, it's not a natural number. So just two categories on that one. So great job. If you want to see some more examples about classifying numbers, I'll put a video on the screen here that you can watch. Otherwise, I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.